Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to practice calling some string methods in Java. So let's go to IntelliJ and get started. So over here we have a string object and we are assigning it to be equal to this string. And now we are going to call some methods of S1. So first of all, we will see the two uppercase and the two lowercase methods. Let's get started. Over here, I'm going to say S1 dot to uppercase like this. So as you can see, this is our method. It takes no parameters and it returns a string. And we said that the string that is returned will be equal to S1, but it will be all in uppercase, right? So let's call the method. And now let's run the program. As you can see, we don't see anything over here. So what's happening exactly? So we are calling this method and this method is creating a new string and it is returning the value, right? But we are not doing anything with the value. We are not printing it, for example. So let's print it. I'm going to use the println method, so something like this. We are printing the result that will be returned when calling this method. So now let's run the program, and now we can see the new string printed. It is equal to s1, but it is all in uppercase, right? So this string over here was created when we called the to uppercase method, and then it was returned to the println method. And after that, the println method printed the string, and this is why we can see it over here. Now let's try the two lowercase method. Let's store the new string inside a variable. So I'm going to create a new string object called s2 and I will assign it to be equal to s1 dot two lowercase, right? So now what will happen exactly? We are calling the two lowercase on our s1 object. So a new string will be created and it will be equal to the s1 string but all in lowercase letters. And the value will be stored inside s2, alright? So let's print s2, so s out s2 like this and run the program. And over here you can see the new string printed and it is all in lowercase letters, all right? And finally, let's try to print S1. So S out, S1, run the program. And as you can see, S1 is not modified. So over here we are creating a new string and also over here we are creating a new string. We are not modifying the original string. Perfect. Now let's have a look at the length method. So over here, I'm going to say S1.length. So this method is called length, it takes no parameters and it returns an integer. So we can predict that this method returns the length of the string. And the length is the number of characters inside the string. So if you count these characters over here, we have 12 characters. So the length method will return 12. And as we saw, it returns an integer, right? So let's call this method and let's store the result inside an integer variable called i. And after that, let's print i. Okay, run the program and have a look over here. We can see 12. So the length method counts the characters inside our string and then it returns the result as an integer, all right? Now I'm going to modify the string. I will add two spaces, for example. So we have two extra characters over here, which are spaces. Now run the program and as you can see now, we have 14 characters. So spaces are considered characters, all right? Now what I'm going to do, I will make this string empty like this. So we have no characters. Run the program, and over here we can see zero. So the length of an empty string is zero, all right? Now let's have a look at the isEmpty method. So over here, I'm going to say s1.isEmpty. Have a look over here. This method takes no parameters and it returns a boolean. And as you can see, it is called isEmpty. And as you can see, the method can return true or false. So if the method returns true, this means that the string is empty. And if it returns false, this means that the string is not empty. So let's call it. And also, let's print the result. So s out, and we're going to print the return result of this method. And in this case, s1 is empty, as you can see. So run the program. And as you can see, we have true. And this is correct, because s1 is empty. So is empty will return true. Now let's put some characters in here. And now run the program again. And as you can see, now we have false. And this is because s1 is not empty. So is empty will return false, all right? Now over here, let me add some spaces. Run the program, and as you can see, we also have false. So even if we have only spaces over here, our string is not considered empty, all right? Now let me show you this method. We have a method called is blank. Run the program, and as you can see, this method also returns a boolean. And in this case, it is returning true. So this method is similar to the is empty method, but when we have only spaces in our string, it returns true, all right? Now let's put some characters other than spaces, run the program, and now we have false. Now let's empty this string, make it like this, and now run the program. 
and as you can see we have true so is empty returns true if and only if our string is empty but is blank returns true if our string is empty or if it consists only of spaces all right now let's have a look at the char at method so over here i'm going to say s1 dot char at okay so as you can see this method takes an integer it is called an index all right and it returns a character so this method will return the character at a given index all right now let's call the method like this and in a little bit we will give it some parameters but first of all let's add some characters to our string for example let's add a b c d now characters inside a string are numbered starting from zero so the index of the first character is zero the second character is one and then we have two and then we have three it's similar to the number that we used with the args group remember the first argument is at number zero and the second one is at number one etc so over here if we pass zero this method will return the first character so let's try it i will store the result inside a character variable called c and after that i'm going to print c like this run the program and have a look we can see the first character of our string now let's for example get the character at index 2 this will be the third character because we have 0 1 2 so the third character is at index 2 so now let's run the program and over here we can see the character c printed let's get the character at index 3 run the program and as you can see we have d which is the fourth character in our string now let's try to get the character at index 4 for example this character doesn't exist because this is the fifth character and our string only contains four characters right so run the program and as you can see we have an error we are trying to reach the fifth character which does not exist in our string now let's have a look at the index of and the last index of methods so in here i'm going to say s1 dot index of so have a look this method takes an int ch as a parameter this ch is an abbreviation for character so basically this method takes a character and it is an integer because as we saw before a character can be represented as an integer right and this method returns an integer have a look over here it is called index of so this method will return the index of a given character inside the string so let's try it so let's call this method and let's give it the character a between single quotes so first of all i'm giving a between single quotes and i'm not giving an integer and this is okay because java will automatically convert the character a to the correct number all right so now the index of method will return the index of the character a inside the string s1 so let's print the result like this all right now run the program and as you can see we have zero over here so the index of the character a inside the string s1 is zero let's try the character d for example so over here i will pass d run the program and now we can see three so the index of the character d inside the string s1 is three now let's try to put a character that does not exist so for example i will put h over here run the program and as you can see we have minus one so when a character does not exist in the string the index of method returns minus one okay now let me modify the string and put another letter a over here and now let's try to get the index of the character a run the program and now we have zero over here so we are getting the index of the first a but what if i want the index of the last a then we will use the last index of method so over here i will call the last index of method and i'm passing the character a so now i'm going to get the index of the last a inside the string run the program and as you can see we have four so the first character zero one two three and then we have four all right and if we add another a over here run the program now we have five because the last a is at index five all right and finally let's have a look at the concat method this method concatenates strings together concatenation is basically adding strings to each other so for example let's say s1 dot concat so as you can see this method takes a string and it also returns a string all right so this method takes a string as a parameter and it concatenates this string to the string s1 and it will create a new string which will be returned by the method so let's try it for example let's put the string academy over here and let's modify our s1 string to be equal to nizu all right so now we are concatenating this string to our string s1 and a new string is returned so let's store this string inside a variable s2 for example and then let's print s2 all right run the program and have a look this is s1 and this is the parameter that we passed to the concat method 
and all of this string is S2, right? So S2 is a new string which is the result of adding this string to S1. Now let's modify this and add a space over here and run the program. And as you can see, now we have a space over here, right? So of course, we have a lot of other methods, but this is enough for now. This is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.